In this activity, you are introduced to the session and how it can be used in the login process. A session is a block of server memory that can be used to store data that is assigned a unique ID. That ID is then stored into a session cookie and sent back and forth between the browser and the server using HTTP requests and responses. When the cookie is received by the server, the ID is read and the session location is accessible by the server to be used with that ongoing interaction between the server and the client. The session cookie is maintained until the session is ended by the browser being closed. The browser not interacting with the server for a specified length of time or the programmatic destruction of the session. The use of the session is critical to the login process. This is because values can be stored into the session by the server and then read and or altered as the request response cycle between the browser and the server occurs. In this activity, the first step is to create the code to create and or access the session in the main controller. Once added and saved, the controller is run. The home view should be delivered. An examination of the cookies will now show the presence of a new session cookie named PHP Sesh ID. The cookie contains the session ID. This same small piece of code must be added to all controllers in the site and should be the first thing after the initial comment on each controller. Once this is done, it is even more critical that a strict implementation of the MVC architecture be followed. By doing so, all controllers and views will have access to the session in order to store and read data that may be stored there. Views must never bypass the controller and move directly to another view. Doing so will cripple the dynamic functionality of the site. Next, we will look at the login view and make sure of two things. One, that the correct method and actions are in the opening form tag as shown and two, that a hidden input exists in the form to trigger the login processing case statement in the controller. Next, a new function is added to the accounts model file. This new function will query a client record based on an email address. You'll notice that it is similar to the previous function, but rather than query only the email address, it queries nearly the complete client data set from the table. Remember that each email address in the table should be unique because of the steps that we have previously taken. If a matching email address is located, then a simple associative array of the client's data is returned. Finally, in the accounts controller, we do a number of things. First, we make sure a case statement exists that will be triggered with the name value pair from the login form when received. For example, action equals login. This login process follows the general process as do most other cases, namely, one, filter and collect the incoming data, two, check for errors, three, if errors are found, return to the view for correction, four, if no errors exist, process the data, five, checks the results of the processing, and six, return a view to the client showing the result. In the controller, we use a combination of PHP functions and our own custom functions to collect and check the incoming email address and password. Next, a basic check is conducted and if errors are found, the login view is sent back to the browser along with an error message. Third, we call our function to check if a record exists in the database table that matches the submitted email address. Fourth, we then use the PHP password verify function to check the submitted password against the stored hashed password to see if they match. If they do not match, an error is generated and again the login view is returned along with the message. If the check is successful, then a flag, otherwise known as an indicator, is set and stored into the session indicating that the site visitor is logged in. The PHP array pop function is used to remove the last element from the array, which is the password hash, as we no longer need it. 
The remaining client data is then stored into the session for later use, and the new client administrative view is returned to the browser. This view will be built as part of the enhancement exercise this week. As you watch this video and process, the thing you must realize is that being logged in is the end result of checking the registration data in the database against the new data being submitted by the client. If the two match, then it is a matter of adding a simple flag to the session that indicates the logged in is true. If at any point the session is lost or destroyed or the flag is removed, then the client is automatically logged out, like it or not.